December 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Amos chapter 7 through 9 of the Old Testament. The Sovereign Lord showed me this. I saw him making locusts just as the crops planted late were beginning to sprout. The crops planted late sprout after the royal harvest. When they had completely consumed the earth's vegetation, I said, Sovereign Lord, forgive Israel. How can Jacob survive? He is too weak. The Lord decided not to do this. It will not happen, the Lord said. The Sovereign Lord showed me this. I saw the Sovereign Lord summoning a shower of fire. It consumed the great deep and devoured the fields. I said, Sovereign Lord, stop. How can Jacob survive? He is too weak. The Lord decided not to do this. The Sovereign Lord said, This will not happen either. He showed me this. I saw the Sovereign One standing by a tin wall, holding tin in his hand. The Lord said to me, What do you see, Amos? I said, Tin. The Sovereign One then said, Look, I am about to place tin among my people Israel. I will no longer overlook their sin. Isaac's centers of worship will become desolate. Israel's holy places will be in ruins. I will attack Jeroboam's dynasty with the sword. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent this message to King Jeroboam of Israel. Amos is conspiring against you in the very heart of the kingdom of Israel. The land cannot endure all his prophecies. As a matter of fact, Amos is saying this. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will certainly be carried into exile away from its land. Amaziah then said to Amos, Leave, you visionary. Run away to the land of Judah. Earn your living and prophesy there. Don't prophesy at Bethel any longer, for a royal temple and palace are here. Amos replied to Amaziah, I was not a prophet by profession. No, I was a herdsman who also took care of sycamore fig trees. Then the Lord took me from tending flocks and gave me this commission. Go, prophesy to my people Israel. So now listen to the Lord's message. You say, don't prophesy against Israel. Don't preach against the family of Isaac. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will become a prostitute in the streets and your sons and daughters will die violently. Your land will be given to others, and you will die in a foreign land. Israel will certainly be carried into exile, away from its land. The Sovereign Lord showed me this. I saw a basket of summer fruit. He said, What do you see, Amos? I replied, A basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end has come for my people, Israel. I will no longer overlook their sins. The women singing in the temple will wail in that day. The Sovereign Lord is speaking. There will be many corpses littered everywhere. Be quiet. Listen to this. You who trample the needy and do away with the destitute in the land. You say, When will the new moon festival be over so we can sell grain? When will the Sabbath end so we can open up the grain bins? We're eager to sell less for a higher price and to cheat the buyer with rigged scales. We're eager to trade silver for the poor, a pair of sandals for the needy. We want to mix in some chaff with the grain. The Lord confirms this oath by the arrogance of Jacob. I swear I will never forget all you have done. Because of this the earth will quake, and all who live in it will mourn. The whole earth will rise like the river Nile. It will surge upward and then grow calm like the Nile in Egypt. In that day, says the Sovereign Lord, I will make the sun set at noon and make the earth dark in the middle of the day. I will turn your festivals into funerals and all your songs into funeral dirges. I will make everyone wear funeral clothes and cause every head to be shaved bald. I will make you mourn as if you had lost your only son. When it ends, it will indeed have been a bitter day. Be certain of this, the time is coming, says the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a shortage of food or water, but an end to divine revelation. People will stagger from sea to sea and from the north around to the east. They will wonder about looking for a revelation from the Lord, 
but they will not find any. In that day your beautiful young women and your young men will faint from thirst. These are the ones who now take oaths in the name of the sinful idol goddess of Samaria. They vow as surely as your God lives, O Dan, or as surely as your beloved one lives, O Beersheba, but they will fall down and not get up again. I saw the sovereign one standing by the altar, and he said, Strike the tops of the support pillars so the thresholds shake. Knock them down on the heads of all the people, and I will kill the survivors with the sword. No one will be able to run away. No one will be able to escape. Even if they could dig down into the nether world, my hand would pull them up from there. Even if they could climb up to heaven, I would drag them down from there. Even if they were to hide on the top of Mount Carmel, I would hunt them down and take them from there. Even if they tried to hide from me at the bottom of the sea, from there I would command the sea serpent to bite them. Even when their enemies drive them into captivity, from there I will command the sword to kill them. I will not let them out of my sight. They will experience disaster, not prosperity. The sovereign Lord who commands armies will do this. He touches the earth and it dissolves. All who live on it mourn. The whole earth rises like the river Nile and then grows calm like the Nile in Egypt. He builds the upper rooms of his palace in heaven and sets his foundation supports on the earth. He summons the water of the sea and pours it out on the earth's surface. The Lord is his name. You Israelites are just like the Ethiopians in my sight, says the Lord. Certainly I brought Israel up from the land of Egypt, but I also brought the Philistines from Kaftor and the Armenians from Kerr. Look, the sovereign Lord is watching the sinful nation, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. But I will not completely destroy the family of Jacob, says the Lord. For look, I am giving a command, and I will shake the family of Israel together with all the nations. It will resemble a sieve being shaken, when not even a pebble falls to the ground. All the sinners among my people will die by the sword. The ones who say, Disaster will not come near, it will not confront us. In that day, I will rebuild the collapsing hut of David. I will seal its gaps, repair its ruins, and restore it to what it was like in days gone by. As a result, they will conquer those left in Edom and all the nations subject to my rule. The Lord, who is about to do this, is speaking. Be sure of this, the time is coming, says the Lord, when the plowman will catch up to the reaper, and the one who stomps the grapes will overtake the planter. Juice will run down the slopes, it will flow down all the hillsides. I will bring back my people Israel. They will rebuild the cities lying in rubble and settle down. They will plant vineyards and drink the wine they produce. They will grow orchards and eat the fruit they produce. I will plant them on their land and they will never again be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. God, I was reading C.S. Lewis because he's awesome. And it was perfect what he said and how it fits to the ending of Amos talking about the obedience of people and what we're actually created for. He said, God made us, invented us as a man invents an engine. A car is made to run on gasoline and it would not run properly on anything else. Now God designed the human machine to run on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn or the food our spirits were designed to feed on. God cannot give us a happiness and peace apart from himself because it is not there. There is no such thing. And it's odd that way a couple thousand years ago they didn't get it. We don't get it now. That it is all about you. That all life comes from you. That you give us everything that we need. And yet we arrogantly go looking for other things that we think will satisfy us. Maybe it's drugs, maybe it's gambling, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's uh, a job title, a new car, a certain type of house, certain neighborhood. We keep 
seeking and searching for other things out there. When you are everything that we need. And I do love how Amos ends a little bit uplifting. That that reconciliation, especially of the remnant, uh, is vital and is there. And it was there a couple thousand years ago and it's, and it's here today. If you look at if you look at the world it looks like there's very few Christians uh, but we are there and we're trying to be as vocal as we possibly can and we know that one day too that you will restore our fortunes not our fortunes here on this earth but our fortunes up in heaven God allow us to fully acknowledge and accept that you are all that we need. Apart from you, there is nothing that we need. You will provide everything for us. And if you don't provide it, we don't need it. True happiness, true peace only comes from you. I have that peace. There's times when I wish I could share it with my friends who are non-Christians. The best I can do is to live a life that glorifies you, God, and to tell them at every chance, every opening I get from you, to tell them about how amazing you are. God, thank you that even though we don't deserve it, you do give us everything we need to be happy, to be peaceful, to thrive and to grow, to feel safe and secure and protected. We know we don't deserve these things, but out of your amazing, endless love, you share them freely with compassion and with mercy and with incredible grace. At least I can speak for me, incredible grace at almost every single point of my entire life. You are my entire world, God. I don't want anything else. And if I start to turn to other things, turn me away. Help me to do and give me the desires of what will please you. I pray all this in your son. Amen.